Hello everyone, welcome to your favorite cash fractional quantifiers. Now, in today's question of the days or base questions of the day, basically in the quiz, we did two questions on geometry. Both are very good one. Both were discussed well in the class and the geometry sessions. And they will be discussed again when we will do geometry next week. So, uh, what does the point say? It says, a square ABCD with side 8 has point E on AD. So, this is the square ABCD. It has a point E on AD. So E is somewhere. E is here. The value of B plus C, B e plus C is definitely greater than. And then we have some options with us. So B e plus C. It is a symmetric figure, right? Square is a symmetric figure. So if I have to make this distance minimum, B e plus C e, what should I do? Can I say I should keep, I should, let's say there are two people standing. One is at this point, one is at this point. I want them both to meet and I want that both of them should carry, uh, travel a minimum distance. The speed of them is same. If I am, let's say, making them travel here, then one person is traveling too much, other is traveling too low. Maybe they one has to travel more, one has to travel less. But distance is quite high over here. If I have to make them travel the minimum distance possible, what I will do? I will say that they are meeting at the midpoint such that they have to meet equally. We will also observe that how we can prove this point. Okay, we will also see that but let's just try to uh, do some jugad right there. Okay, so let's say E is the midpoint. If e is the midpoint. If E is the midpoint. The side is 8. So if this is 8, this is 4. This is 4. What is B? They are basically 4 square plus 8 square under root of 8 square plus 4 square. So under root of 80, that is 16 into 5, that is 4 root 5. So basically this is 4 root 5. If this is 4 root 5, this will also be 4 root 5. In this way, they will have to travel the minimum distance. 4 root 5 plus 4 root 5 is 8 root 5. So 8 root 5 is the minimum distance they have to travel. So the distance is definitely greater than or equal to. The important word is or equal to 8 root 5. So 8 root 5 se kam ni hoga, but zada hoga. Yeah, but it's equal over, right? So our answer from the given options is 8 root 5. If I have to select something from the option, I will select 8 root 5, right? So from the options, it is 8 root 5. Now, is there any way to prove that too? Uh, though this is quite sufficient as a proof, but let's just understand one more thing. Let's say this point is somewhere else. Let's say this point is here. E point. Okay. Now my line segments are this. Now, uh, these are two points B and C. B and C are the two points which I am basically traveling through E. I am going through B, E, C. This is a route I am traveling through, right? Now, if I have to reach B from C, the minimum distance I have to travel is the straight line, right? Because straight line is the minimum distance between any two points. Now, if I am able to deduce some region through E such that I am traveling through a straight line and I am reaching from B to C, I might be able to reduce my result. Or I can say that if this is BE, if I'm just constructing this BE over here, let's say somewhere here, I'll be able to know the minimum length, right? So to deduce this, what I'll do, let me just draw an identical square over here. So what I did, I just drew this. Now let's say if this point was B, this is B dash. It is an identical square. Can I say uh, this length? length of B dash E. This length of B dash E is equal to B because the figure is symmetric, obviously. Now, if I ask you that I have to travel from B dash to C, what is the minimum distance I need to travel? You will say it will be a straight line. So if it will be a straight line, it will be something like this. Right? E is just giving me some extra distance to travel if I am traveling through E. So what is the minimum distance you need to travel in order to achieve this straight line? This is 16. This is 8. So the minimum distance you need to travel is under root of 16 square plus 8 square. That is 256 plus 64 under root of 320. That is nothing but 8 root 5, 64 into 5 or 8 root 5. So 8 root 5 is the minimum distance being traveled. Right? Now if I am moving E anywhere else on this line, I am traveling distance more than 8 root 5. So this is the proper derivation of this concept that we just did from it and try. Right? 
So this was the first question. Let's say second question. The second question is you need to find the area of shaded portion. So this is 12. We have a question may given that okay, if you are watching this video on YouTube for the first time, this was given in the question that it is a square of side 12. And I need to calculate the area of this shaded or the black portion. Now for any triangle, let's say, if I need to calculate the area in how many ways I can do that. First, I can drop a perpendicular half into base into height, the conventional technique. If I drop a bay, if I drop a perpendicular over here, I'll have this base into height. Okay, I'll do something like this. So if I have a drop a perpendicular, I have to drive so many things. I need the length of this. I need the length of this base. There are many constraints available. One of this angle given is 60. So if this angle is 60, can I say this is 30? Right? This is a square. Now you tell me that if I am telling you that in this triangle, this side is 12, this angle is 30 degree, what is the minimum requirement you need to find the area? You will say that the area can also be derived as half into AB sin theta, right? Where A and B are the sides and theta is the angle between them. So here I know, here I know that this is 12, this is 30 degree, I need to find this length somehow. Again, this is an obstacle. But what can I do? Do I can I do some comparison analysis or something? Uh, see, I know the whole half area. So the half of this area will be half of the area will be 72, right? 144 ka half, the half area will be 72. Let's call them some points A, B, C, and D. So if I call them A, B, C, and D, let's call this point E. I know that area of triangle A, B, C will be 72. That is half of 144. Okay. Now I also know, now remember this, I am just telling it to you directly, I will also prove this, that when two triangles share the common side, common side like this, this is the common side, BE, and they have one side equal joining, like AB is equal to BC. There, Areas are nothing but in the ratio of their sine angle. How? Oh, it's very easy to derive it. Area of triangle ABE would be half into AB into BE into sine 60. Half AB sine theta. Similarly, area of triangle BEC would be half into BC into BE into sine 30. Now, if you see AB and BC are same because they are square side of square, so I can write it as AB only. Different neogos, right? Now, if I divide these two, if I divide these two, half AB, B, half AB, B, so basically area of triangle AB, E upon area of triangle BEC is nothing but sine 60 upon sine 30. Very easy. What is sine 60? Root 3 by and what is sine 31 by 2? So area is nothing but in the ratio of root 3 to 1. So if this AB is root 3, this area is just 1, right? Root 3 to 1. And the total area this is, total this area is 72, right? The total area of this figure is 72. So if total is 72 and divided in the ratio of root 3 to 1, then the area of this portion, the of triangle BC would be 1 upon root 3 plus 1 into 72. So basically if I factorize it 72 into root 3 minus 1 root 3 plus 1 into minus 1. So it is nothing but 72 root 3 minus 1 root 3 plus 1 root 3 root 3 square minus 1 square. So 3 minus 1 2. So it is nothing but 36 into root 3 minus 1. Okay. So this is the required answer of this question. Right. So with this, we have completed our concept. I hope you guys understood it. If you did, please do subscribe to our channel. Our new batch is starting soon. And if you wish to be the part of it, we are going to start with geometry also. So please join us with the link in the description. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.